Hi, I'm Glenn Colbert. This is a short video about dealing with DSP board problems in PV Viper Series 1 amplifiers. PV Viper Series 1 amplifier was one of the first guitar amplifiers to incorporate modeling. Modeling is the process of using a computer program and a digital signal processing chip to change the sound of the amplifier versus having completely different wiring. This allowed the Viper 1 to sound like a Fender or to sound like a Marshall simply by throwing switches on the front. So now one amplifier could do the job that you used to require a whole studio full of amplifiers before. Introducing computers to guitar amplifiers has some unique problems. First off, computer programs are never perfect. They always have bugs. They always need to have upgrades. PV's approach to that was to allow upgrades to the software using a MIDI port at the back of the amplifier that was also used to control a foot pedal. Well, this is dual use wasn't quite conducive to being dependable. And what happened a lot of times was when people would try to upgrade the software, they'd find that the amplifier was no longer functional. What was happening was that the software update process would fail to move all the data into the proper memory chip on the DSP board before something failed. And now the computer program that runs the amplifier is no longer executable. And basically the amplifier is dead. So how do we know if we've got a brick Viper? Well, typically you're going to know because you've tried to do an upgrade, you powered it back on, and your amplifier is now dead. That's a real good giveaway. But if you picked up this Viper from someplace else and you're not really sure what's going on and it's not working, the first thing to check is to see if you get the light show display. The light show is a diagnostic display that shows on PV Vipers when they first power up without an instrument plugged into the front. So if you plug in the Viper, disconnect the instrument on the front and power it up, you should see a light show that looks pretty much like this. If you're not seeing this light show, there's some kind of a problem somewhere and there's a good chance that it has to do with the DSP board not having a correct, a correct flash on it. Well, the first thing to do is to check the power. Make sure that your power cord is plugged into the wall, the circuit breaker is working, that the power cord is plugged into the back of the amplifier. Next, disconnect the instrument from the front of the Viper and power it on. A powered on Viper should show the diagnostic light show like is shown right here. You can see the little LEDs making circles around the knobs. If you're not seeing the LED light show, then something's wrong with the amplifier. If you're sure you're getting power in and the amplifier is not showing the light show, it's probably time to start thinking about taking it apart and looking to see what's going on. Four screws on the top of the amplifier hold the electronic chassis inside the cabinet. These can be removed easily with a screwdriver, showing the inside of the chassis. The chassis top is not covered so it's easy to work on once it's removed. One of the first things we'll want to do when we check the chassis out is to see if the fuse is good. So check the voltage across the fuse. Make sure that you have logic voltage up to the DSP board. This particular little blue board with a lot of chips on it, unlike the rest of the amplifier, is the DSP board. So here we have a chassis from a Viper 15. It's been removed from the cabinet. We've gone through, we've connected the AC power up, check to make sure the power cord is good, that we have power in the power supply, that there's power across the fuse, the fuse is good, and that it has input voltage to the uh, DSP board. And you notice that when we go over and we turn it on, it's nothing. It's like it's not powered up at all. But with power on, we can go back in with a little digital multimeter. And you can see that we do have the uh, correct power voltages coming out of the power supply to feed uh, the DSP board. So the DSP board is not working for some reason. So what we're going to do is we're going to dig into the DSP a little bit, figure out what we can do to bring it back up and make it functional again. So in the interest of full disclosure, this particular Viper 15 is one that I know was uh, was damaged through a problem with a firmware upload. I, I uh, did the firmware upload myself. So I know that that's the problem, but what happens is with the firmware this bad, when you turn it on you can't connect the, uh, the MIDI cord in the back to load up a new copy of the firmware. 
So if you're depending on the Viper to come up far enough to load new firmware in, you're kind of stuck and there isn't a whole lot you can do. But these chips were designed to be programmed outside of the circuit. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a chip programmer that's designed for programming the memory chip inside the Viper, connect it straight onto the memory chip in the motherboard. We're going to take a copy of the Viper software that we've already loaded down off of another Viper and we're going to directly load the memory chip using a memory chip programmer instead of using the Viper software to do that. Now, typically programming the memory chips you use a chip programmer. It's a tool that's commonly found in a lot of electronics labs or in prototyping kits but they're a little bit expensive to buy to do something like this for. After all, it's just fixing a $100 component, so you're not going to spend you know, six or $700 on a memory chip programmer to fix a $100 component. But there are, there are other uh, solutions around this, and one of them has to do with this, uh, this little kit board. It's a uh, Arduino Uno, and this is like an erector set for electronics. It's a cute little toy that you can actually do lots of little things. They're used for little robotics projects or automation things that you just need a, a smart programmable interface to do. And one of the things that uh, someone has come up with a program for this is to turn it into a chip programmer. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this, uh, this little component. The board itself is about uh, $25, $30 and with the prototyping kit it comes out to about 70 bucks, but I use it for other stuff and it was a, a nice present for my son-in-law anyway. So we're going to take this and we're going to turn it into a chip programmer by loading some software up to it, connect it directly to the memory chip inside the Viper, and we're going to take the software that we've read from another Viper memory chip and we're going to write it directly back into the chip. And with that we should be able to get the DSP on this card working and get the Viper so that it uh, is not a dead Viper anymore. So we're going to use an Ubuntu Linux install to talk to the Arduino to flash this, uh, this flash memory. So first you have to have a, a, a Linux version up and running that can talk to the Arduino. And there are, are two different programs that are happening here. The first program, FlashROM, runs on the Linux box and it talks to the, uh, the FlashROM programmer. The other is we have to have the program that we load down onto the Arduino to turn it into a flash ROM. So first we're going to go through and we're going to load a uh, program called flash ROM. We're going to use the app get program to do that. So now that we have the, uh, the flash ROM program down on the Linux box, we need to load down the Surprog program. And we'll use uh, AppGit to do that. There are a couple other libraries that are required as well. And your best choice is to go out to the uh, Surprog website to get things right for your particular install. So now we're going to load down the bits and pieces to do Surprog on the Arduino. And we're going to run the command line that uploads the Surprog program from our Unix box up into the Arduino. So now that we have all the software in place, it's time to go over and configure the Arduino so that it can write to this memory chip. So to do that, we have a couple of different pieces that we've used. Well, you could go through and directly solder uh, leads right onto the serial memory chip inside the Viper. I didn't really want to get in with a soldering iron and do that. I wanted to have repeatable results. So one of the things I got was uh, I got this little test clip, and it has little wires on the inside that connect onto the memory chip and it plugs into the prototyping board here for the Arduino. So rather than soldering and unsoldering, we'll just use this clip 
we'll connect it right to the memory on the mother on the uh, DSP board in the Viper, and we'll program it right in place. But like I said, if you uh, if you don't have the prototyping board, or if you have a hard time getting the clip, you could conceivably uh, go through directly solder the leads onto the serial memory chip inside the Viper and perform this process. So the next step in the process here is to connect the uh, Arduino board up to our prototyping board so that we can plug in our clip header and do that. So the little uh, the digital leads that are coming off the uh, Arduino board are going to connect over to this dip header and then we're going to put our clip on this dip header. So first we have a, a couple of positive voltages that have to go into the uh, end of the board. And you just plug these little wires right into the board like this. It's really pretty straightforward and simple to do. So pins 7 and 8 are over on this side. They both need uh, positive voltage. After that we need uh, pin 13 on the diurno needs to go to the next guy down. and pin number 11 from the Juno over to the next pin down. So I guess that side of the dip header wired up. On the next side over on the other one we need to take uh, pin number 10 from the Juno and plug it into pin number 1. We need to take the uh, pin 12 goes into the next one next guy down just needs some voltage on it so I've got uh, a voltage from that and then the next guy down is ground. So now the Diono board is plugged up and the only thing that we have to do is connect the header. The header for the chip has a, a little connector on the other side that looks kind of like this and it just plugs right onto this header on the top. And now the, uh, the Arduino board is ready to go for a programmer. So <clears throat> we're going to go through and we're going to connect the clip to the serial memory chip. The mer serial memory chip is the one in this uh, board that has the orange dot on it. The little clip goes on like an alligator clip and it clips right onto this memory chip. You want to be careful to line it up exactly right because if it's not exactly right it won't read properly. So here we have the uh, the clip connected to the serial memory chip so that we can burn it. So we've gone through the process, we've root flashed the ROM. Now we can come back in and disconnect our, uh, our jumper header. We're basically through with the programming and to validate our results what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll take the amplifier and run a little bit of voltage into it. I have a power supply down here. So I'll plug my 110 in, plug it into the back of the amplifier and let's see what happens when we power it on. So no instrument in the front, it should give us a light show when we turn it on. Up comes the lights and there you have it. What was dead is risen again and we've got a Viper that is now functional and, and should continue on until the next time we decide to goof it up uh, trying to upload a different version of the software. Thanks for listening, I hope I helped out and uh, don't be afraid to goof around with things.